Hi, welcome back to the channel. Today we'll delve into the thoughts of one of the most influential physicists of the 20th century, Erwin Schrödinger. He's primarily known for his groundbreaking contributions to quantum mechanics. In this video I will explore um, his surprising worldview, considering he was a physicist, but not so surprising because he was a quantum physicist. I am going to base my thoughts on two of his books, one of them my view of the world and the other one what is life. Let's get started. Erwin Schrödinger was born in 1887 in Vienna, Austria. Growing up uh, in a well-to-do family, Schrödinger was exposed to a rich intellectual environment. His father was a manufacturer and botanist, and his mother had um, a very great interest in the arts, and so fostered his curiosity. Schrödinger studied at the University of Vienna. Um, he earned his doctorate in physics in 1910, and he began his academic career during a period of great upheaval in Europe. While serving as an artillery officer with the Austro-Hungarian forces in World War I, Schrödinger still found the time to study papers written by Albert Einstein. After the war, Schrödinger held various academic positions across Europe, eventually becoming a professor at the University of Zurich. He wrote his thesis um, for the Schrödinger equation while in a sanatorium being treated for tuberculosis. The condition caused him grief for much of his life, but it also provided him with extensive study time. It was here that he developed his wave equation, which turned out to be a breakthrough in quantum mechanics and subsequently earned him the Nobel Prize in physics in 1933. Schrödinger's personal life was unconventional. He had numerous romantic relationships and often challenged societal norms. His intellectual pursuits extended beyond physics to philosophy, literature and Eastern religions, particularly Vedanta. In the book My View of the World, Schrödinger challenges the materialist perspective, which posits that only physical matter exists and that consciousness sort of arises from material interactions. Schrödinger argued for a much more integrated understanding of reality, one that considers consciousness as a fundamental aspect of existence. This idea suggests that individual consciousnesses are part of a greater unified whole, questioning the conventional separation between mind and matter. Schrödinger further explores the theme, stating This non-dualistic view challenges the traditional dichotomy between the observer and the observed, proposing instead that they are inseparably linked. This critique highlights the need for a broader framework that encompasses both the physical and the consciousness aspect of reality. Schrödinger's work in quantum mechanics led him to question the nature of reality itself. Quantum physics revealed that particles exist in a state of probability until observed, implying that the observer plays a crucial role in shaping reality. 
This was encapsulated in Schrodinger's famous thought experiment, Schrodinger's Cut, which illustrated the paradox of, of quantum superposition and measurement. In the book What is Life, Schrödinger explores the implications of quantum mechanics for understanding biological processes. He proposed that life at its core involves quantum states that cannot be fully explained by classical physics. This led to his groundbreaking concept of the aperiodic crystal. Schrödinger introduced the idea of an aperiodic crystal as a way to explain genetic information storage. Unlike periodic crystals, whose structures repeat regularly, aperiodic crystals have a complex and non-repeating structure. Schrodinger speculated that this complexity could store genetic information in a stable yet dynamic form, which was revolutionary at the time. This elegant metaphor captures the dual role of genetic material in both storing and expressing biological information. Schrodinger's insights laid the groundwork for later discovery of DNA double helix by Watson and Crick. The concept of the aperiodic crystal directly inspired their search for the structure that could carry genetic information. Schrodinger's interdisciplinary approach, blending physics and biology, exemplifies his innovative thinking. Schrodinger's engagement with Vedanta, a school of Hindu philosophy, deeply influenced his worldview. He resonated with the Vedantic notion that the self or Atman and the universe or Brahman are one. This aligns with his idea of a unified consciousness. This idealist perspective sees the apparent diversity of the world as a manifestation of a singular underlying reality. Schrödinger believed that science and philosophy together could lead to a deeper understanding of this unity. He was particularly drawn to the concept of non-duality or Advaita, which posits that there is no fundamental separation between the self and the universe. This view challenges the Western notion of individualism and emphasizes a collective unity. Schrödinger's philosophical stance is also reflected in his critique of the conventional scientific worldview. He argued that science, in its quest for objectivity, often neglects the subjective experience. Schrödinger believed that understanding reality required acknowledging the role of consciousness and the subjective perspective. He saw parallels between modern physics and ancient Eastern philosophy, suggesting that both pointed towards a deeper and interconnected reality. Schrödinger's idealist views also influenced his ethical beliefs. He embraced a form of universal compassion rooted in the idea that harming others is, in a sense, harming oneself. Mm -hmm. 
Schrödinger's integration of scientific inquiry with philosophical and spiritual perspectives provides a springboard for understanding the universe in non-materialistic terms. He's one of the many luminaries that have contributed to the movement of non-dualism. The weight of his contribution is obvious. Being a physicist, his thinking should be the epitome of materialism, one would think, but it is quite the contrary. We have heard similar accounts. Uh, you can, for instance, look at my videos on David Bohm. And as always, I am providing you with some high quality links in the description box below for further research. Fun fact, a moon crater was named after Erwin Schrödinger, found on the far side of the moon near the lunar south pole. The Schrödinger crater is the best preserved impact basin of its kind. I hope you were able to take something away from this video. If you have, please like, share and subscribe for more of such content. And I will see you next time.